All right. So the agenda is Leo first, and then Daniel and Mark talking about uh, transitive immutability. Go away. Go ahead. Okay. Um, uh, so one of the the things that we have today, uh, I'm just going to give uh, from the updates that I set in the agenda for the next week. It's actually just the web globals and module graph. Let's start with web globals. So we've had in the realms repo, a long discussion in the issue number 284. Um, I'm gonna uh, discussions on uh, how the, the realms would allow the host to add anything. And the previous text like this to the current text says um, things might not uh, may not be added or something like that, but it, it's still like not uh, prohibitive for hosts to add anything. It's just more like a recommendation to not add anything, but not prohibitive. Um, and after some discussions, and in order to make this um, re uh, becomes reality, we ex we change uh, we are changing the text with the new uh, uh, with the new. I'm trying to copy copy this pull request. We change the text to to change this hook to uh, now also. Now we actually create a prohibition for any properties added to the global uh, by the host, uh, they should, they must all be um, configurable. And uh, we also uh, create some uh, text saying they should have no authority. And we try to expand some text in there. In this pull request, you can see it saying uh, what this authority means to not give like, to just not expect anyone will interpret uh, authority the same way. So we give some definition. I recommend everyone to just go to this pull request. Um, I also have an editorial note with examples of things we uh, expect that can be added by the uh, embedding uh, realms with the web with within the HTML integration that realms needs to go. This um, text is satisfactory for uh, what you need to accept the realms in the Chrome team. And Shu is happy with the, the modification, the proposed modification. Um, there is a lot of noise in this pull request and in the other issues from Jack Works and some other people. I am trying to not go in that vicious uh, loop with them. I'm trying to avoid that. Uh, this is being distracting, but uh, this is what is happening right now. Uh, this editorial note with the examples, I just make sure it's, actual, uh, it's also flagged as a note as like, the specification does not recommend any specific addition in the web embedding HTML and web IDL. I will specify which interfaces are included. And uh, um, we mostly try to cut off like IO features, etc., or features that will create side effects. Also for... hidden, hidden mutable state as well. Yes, that that should be prohibited. Though part of the noise is where Jack says, "Oh, this wouldn't prohibit hidden immutable state," but I think the wording prohibits it, and we should just clarify the wording so that it actually does. Okay. Yeah, in in the actual paragraph, we actually say, uh, like, the, uh, I'm just read some uh, part here. Those properties must each be configurable to provide platform capabilities with no authority to, to cause side effects such as IO or mutation of values that are shared across different realms uh, within the same host environment. I think that covers that mostly, but we can no, improve it, it. It does not. Uh, a, um, uh, 
hidden mutable state would, would doesn't mean necessarily mean that you're communicating between realms. It just means that you can't suppress the mutability with freeze because freeze only freezes properties. So for example, a date instance that's not shared still has hidden mutable state because freezing a date instance uh, does not lock down the mutable state that can be manipulated by the built-in date methods. So I, I think the, the fact that these are all specified to be configurable properties also gives us defense against if the host were to add something with uh, you know, a shared state within the realm, because it can be deleted by the thing that creates the realm instance before sending it to application code. Yeah, on that note, my understanding is that my understanding of the layering of the architecture of these proposals is that realms would give you uh, would give you a realm like uh, th that is uh, it would give you a, 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 let me say loosely a mutable realm like the like the uh, the the, the, in, the initial realm that you get in a typical JavaScript environment and then lockdown would propose to work in any realm to turn it into a CES environment. And then, uh, and then from within, then the, then then we have CES. The, the realms are not obliged to give you CES. Right, and and, and CES works without realms. So yeah. yeah. Well, CES CES works on the premise that everywhere is a realm. <laughs> that works without the realm proposal. Right. Um, so yeah, so, so I, I find it satisfying for there to be a date with mutable state, because that's something that, that would be res lockdown's responsibility to repair. I, I, I think that it's okay even if math random's in there. I think it would be strange and unexpected if it were not. Yeah, in the current proposal, math random is present. Oh. Um, so the, you know, the realm proposal creates a normal JavaScript environment. Okay. Um, and it, so I think this change there is kind of a normative change in this BR because it does permit the host to add these properties. In our discussions with, uh, you know, with Chrome and, and Mozilla, it seemed like that was quite important to them that the host would be able to add properties, but the hope is that it, it be in quite a restricted way, as as we've discussed in this call before. In uh, just you know, being. A nitpick: the the normative change is actually like we already uh, did allow adding properties. The normative change is actually we are uh, not allowing adding uh, non-configurable properties anymore. We're disallowing a non-configurable uh, properties. Uh, yeah, actually, you're right. Sorry for sorry for misunderstanding. No, no, no problem. Uh, I'm just saying like we are actually creating a restriction on what was allowed. Uh, it was just like implicitly low. It was just a very small text, like saying it, it was allowed. Like it, there was no like just a. The previous text just worked as a like a fine recommendation. Like we don't expect properties to be added, but not expecting doesn't mean like we are disallowing them to be added. So so part of the idea here is that uh, we would work with the web people to figure out which globals are added, but the exact set of globals would be, it would be specified in the web standards, not, not in JavaScript, just based on the constraints specified here. And we might come to that final list after stage three. We wouldn't necessarily block stage three on all the host integration, just on make, making sure that we have the, the basis set up. Though, though in practice, it won't ship until uh, that list is, is finalized. My hope for this is to be able to experiment uh, realms, uh, regardless of like a final definition of these uh, these global properties. So we can have like tests running, uh, everything. Hopefully we might be able to have realms under a, a flag before we have all the global definitions and we make sure like it, it's available and then we can we can play with these restrictions of globals that can be removed or the or web standards defined they need to be added. Honestly, I am weird. Like my goal is to, to get like the least amount of uh, globals added by the web platform. Um, 
but like for reality within web standards, we need to. Could, could you enumerate some of the expected web specific globals? I think something like text encoder and uh, URL, these are, these are kinds of things that uh, don't have authority, but actually are genuinely useful across environments and could sort of logically be considered this part of this higher level JavaScript standard library. So let, uh, me, let, let me make a, a, a suggestion that I believe I did make on the thread on the poll request uh, is that um, uh, just like the ECMAScript standard cites Unicode, a uh, particular version of Unicode uh, without including a copy of Unicode or getting into a turf war with Unicode, uh, we can likewise have ECMAScript standardize globals like URL and text encoder decoder that really are cross-platform and authority free, including hidden state free. Um, we can go ahead and, and have ECMAScript standardize the global names and their bindings to that behavior where the, for the behavior, we cite the web standard rather than getting into a turf war with the W3C. So, so I, I think we, that those things should be promoted into standard ECMAScript globals. We, we've discussed this with them repeatedly and the, the answer is no, they don't want to have to ask for TC39 consensus to add an additional global. This is a chicken and egg uh, problem. I think in this case, we get a better strategy if we add this and we can definitely follow up like with first with editorial note of things that are finally added. I think like for stage four, when we have the pull request to ACMA 262, we can actually create an editorial note with listing uh, what the web, uh, web platform adds. And uh, like we cannot have this text yet we just like assume, uh, but like definitely in the pull request, I want to have a tutorial uh, note with uh, uh, listing all of these. Um, and I make, I, I'll make sure like this list includes everything. And we can then uh, discuss again at TC39 saying like, this is the web reality. And now that it becomes the web reality, we can definitely explore adding these in TC39 without asking them for permission on doing that because that's web reality. We can definitely standardize what is web reality. So, so I think so, that what's going on here is that the web platform wishes, uh, that the browser vendors in particular wish to have um, a space where they can experiment with new features without having to ask for standardization before including them. And I think that we can have, uh, I think that it might be acceptable to have a hybrid approach where, um, where the, the text the, the norm the normative text of the spec does allow for the existence of things that are not in the in the spec within constraints like you the like the configurability constraint because that is necessary for a, a realm to be locked down possible <laughs> for uh, but uh, but also to say um, in 262 we could say uh, if you have a text encoder, it must conform to this spec. If you have a text decoder, it must conform to the spec. If you have a URL, it must be this URL. Um, in order to provide some, uh, in order to arbitrate disagreement anyway. Yeah, I, I like that idea. I think that would be acceptable to browsers. Can I ask a clarifying question? Um, I. What are some of the anticipated use cases for Realms? Uh, and was test runners uh, one of them uh, that I remember seeing on the list? Um, in that case, isn't, wouldn't there be a request from web environments to have access to some APIs such as, for example, Worker, uh, which are definitely outside of what we're talking about uh, authority here? But that would be required, and especially because those are not, uh, they cannot be um, put behind a membrane because they have like special capabilities, such as transferring uh, and, and disconnecting objects. Um, so in, in that, I, I'm, I'm just, I just wanted to ask, like, if 
there has to be a way to support use cases like test runners, and those might require a special web API such as Worker. Uh, how do we reconcile that? Sorry, can you explain more about why a uh, worker could not be put behind a uh, membrane? For example, a worker, when you, um, you, you can pass array buffers uh, through them and transfer them uh, or shared array buffers and have them shared, you, you can't uh, do that through a membrane uh, between realms. So you wouldn't be able to uh, membrane the worker API. You would have to have it natively exposed inside the realm. I mean, would a would it like a worker aware worker API aware membrane be able to like unpack those things in the right situation? I mean, I think the test runner the the whole uh, restricted realm API that we have as a whole makes it a more awkward fit for um, test runners than the previous one, the one that's restricted to to primitives and callables. Yeah, but I. I just want to point out that this this was a uh, use cases uh, for realms, and uh, if this restricted realm API doesn't satisfy it, then there might be pushback. It might still satisfy it if uh, it is allowed to uh, have those special host APIs, powerful host APIs. Um, I just don't know how to handle that case. Uh, I so. I think we uh, there is a, a nitpick here where I believe workers can be put behind a membrane uh, perfectly. I think the problem uh, that you actually mentioned is actually within the shared array buffers, and there is a challenge here for us to to explore how it's actually going to be. And uh, I. I, I mean, one of the footprint was my example, but you have another one, which is off screen canvas, uh, which that one, uh, I really don't think you can, uh, you can put behind a membrane. It, 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 yeah, it, it is hard. It is hard for me to explore that with, without actually uh, giving the, the main brain uh, yet. I think we need to explore more. Like the the polyfill is not like ready for me to to show up here uh, today. Um, you muted, Mark. Do you have a polyfill? We have a polyfill like that. I just don't feel ready to show up in this presentation. I worked on something. Rick did a lot of uh, extra work uh, to to bring it up here, but I just don't. I. I don't want to show it up here because it's too early. Really? Next week, I, I will show up something uh, with uh, next week. It might be limited on the import uh, part because of like reality cannot bring me uh, a true import uh, experience. Um, unless I actually hack the browser code. Um, <laughs> but like, if we use the evaluate parts, yes, we can have it uh, now. And uh, the proof of concept that I want to give to you next week is actually showing this polyfill working with Karidi's iRealm main brain implementation. Awesome, awesome. Uh, this is my goal. Like this is one, um, one of my goals before requesting stage three. Uh, I did not forget about it. Well, all of this will be open source and on GitHub. It is already. It's just like in a very early stage. And it's being test-based because Rick and I, we, 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 we work with tests all, all around. And I, I want to also extract these tests eventually to become test to six to formatted tests. Um, I actually want to have tests ready uh, when we request stage three. Um, so yeah. Um, this is one of the things that like, it's hard for me to answer how it's gonna work. It's uh, right now, uh, the, the, the realms, they are doable for most use cases. I know like the, the shift we, we made from the previous uh, realms that gave like full global disk capabilities, full access to the global disk, to now this one that is uh, with, within a callable boundary. Uh, it limits some of the use cases. Uh, 
And we definitely need to explore how to uh, open more access to these. I think one of the things with, within this realms API is that like it all, uh, it still allows some exploration on how we we promote more access for uh, cases that are like this. One of them, like that I have in uh, in plans, uh, in my plans, is actually like providing more access to a shared array buffer because that's definitely going to hit me uh, eventually, uh, and we definitely need to to make sure we we have access for that. But I. And I guess if you have any uh, anything transferable in general uh, on the web uh, side of things, uh, if, if that could be a solution for that. And I don't know how the layering would work in that case, but then I would solve most of your uh, your problems with those powerful APIs. Yeah. Can you can you explain what transferable things are special about compared to other things with internal slots? Um, I guess. Transferable things are special, yeah, in the sense that internal the objects get recreated on the other side with internal slots uh, that are somewhat linked. Uh, I, I don't, I'm not super familiar, but I, I as a user of web APIs, off screen canvas, and, and some of those are uh, things, that, uh, message channel, all those things are things that can be transferred between uh, JavaScript execution contexts. Yeah, but I, I really, hope that in, in a membrane, it's, you know, the same solution as everything else for internal slots that you have to like unpack it before sending it <clears throat> to that method that needs the original copy. And that's like one of the core functions of the membrane. And so transferable things have an internal slot by virtue of the, uh, the kind of interface brand that WebIDL assigns the, the object, the platform object. And that's, you know, it's analogous to an internal slot. Yeah, what, what I meant is that maybe there are some special objects that can be passed through uh, the isolated realm proposal, like shared array buffer. Uh, they just end up being reconstructed on the other side. So that there is no shared identity. I mean, all those objects get moved from one rail to another. They get reconstructed, basically. Yeah. Uh, OK, I guess we'll, we'll do as Leo suggested and, and try to investigate this more offline. Okay. I think we're, we're at half time. Uh, I have a suggestion for what we can do regarding Jack Works's objections. I think that. I think, uh, let me ask Mark, is, is it fair to, to characterize the relationship between realms and lockdown and compartments in the way described earlier that, uh, that a realm does not provide the invariant, is, is we, that we, for CES's purposes, we do not require the realm to provide the invariants that we've talked about for compartments, particularly um, the, uh, the restrictions for, oh, you're muted. Thank you. Uh, for, uh, you're, you're right about CES, that CES does not require um, uh, realms even to avoid powerful globals. Um, right. But the, as we've seen, there are some uh, use cases for um, uh, you know, capability confinement that treat the, that in which you're trying to confine code that does modify primordials and therefore uh, uh, for which CES is not a uh, solution that fits. And for those, what you want to do is uh, create a realm and have the realm uh, as a whole be the uh, unit of confinement. Um, and where you know bad code within the realm can foul its own nest, but the realm as a whole can only interact with the external world according to the confinement rules. Uh, and um, uh, you could still have initialization code that removes things from the global. Um, uh, so it's not fatal to have powerful things on the global, um, but it really comes down to an issue of what is the purpose of having a realm API uh, in addition to the existing 
platform specific realm creation APIs like creating an iframe, right? When you create an iframe, you get a new DOM tree, you get all sorts of powerful things that come from the platform. And then it becomes a lot of work to, 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 to throw those things away. And if you're gonna create them just to throw them away, it's a lot of, of, of um, you know, overhead for no purpose. Um, and, uh, and it also uh, creates a maintenance problem, which is as TC39 adds globals and as W3C adds globals, uh, how does old cleaning code know which new globals to throw away or not to throw away? Um, one of the things that I suppose we could propose that goes along with this is that uh, the platform itself, the TC30, you know, the ECMAScript itself provide a whitelist of uh, what are the global names that TC39 itself standardizes so that initialization code can know to throw away only the things that are not on the whitelist. Um, nobody's proposing that right now, but I think yeah, something like I, that would be necessary in order to have user code do the throwing away in a way that that that's, that uh, is not a maintenance burden. So I, I'm pretty sure such an API would face these exact same objections from these web platform people where they say they don't want to create such a distinction between the web platform and, and JavaScript so, so sometimes APIs. I'm, so the fact that they would have an objection doesn't mean that we give up. It means that we have a fight on our hands. Well, I, do, do we want to link this fight to the proposing the Realm API to stage three, or do we want it to, to be decoupled from that? Because, you know, Leo, Leo and I have been really trying to, to come to some kind of agreement with the web platform people, and we feel like we're really close. And uh, I personally don't want to start another fight right now, if we can avoid it. I would, I would cert okay, so, I, so let me just stipulate that I certainly think we should avoid fights that we can avoid. Um, uh, it's, it's always good to, post, to avoid fights or to decouple fights and have them later uh, to the extent that we can without compromising our goals. Um, so, the, the, um, so the first question is what, what is the goal of providing a platform independent Realm API standardized as part of JavaScript, given that the web platform already has a web platform specific API for creating a, a web platform specific realm, i.e. the iframe, that's endowed with web platform specific powers. Oh, well, I think it's worth noting that the, the iframe gives you a realm, but it also gives you a document. Right. And and there's a, there's a difference between having a document and having access to things like URL and text encoder. So 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 getting getting a realm that that um, on a on a browser host that has access to web platform globals, but does not has not constructed a document to go along with them, uh, is is in my opinion still of value. Okay, so if the new things are, okay, the thing about uh, uh, text encoder, decoder, and URL is they are genuinely powerless, uh, not both absence of IO and shared state, but also absence of hidden mutable state. You freeze them and they're transitively immutable. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the, are we, are, so um, are we agreed that the powerlessness should be defined the way the object capability community, uh, community would, would define them, i.e. that they also have no hidden mutable state? I, I think we'd have to discuss this on the basis of a particular wording that's proposed. I also think that we, we do run the risk of generating more controversy the more, uh, the more fancy we get with this definition. So, well, the, I mean, it's, it's a question it's of wording it well. Well, it's also quite, I mean, we're not trying to avoid controversy to any cost. We're trying to avoid controversy to cost we can afford. Okay. Hmm. So maybe you could propose a wording and then we could, we could think about that wording. Okay. So one understanding is that, that I had is that the web platform wanted to deprecate 
same origin iframes, um, direct access to same origin iframes uh, as much as possible, and basically make them ultimately somewhat opt-in. Um, so this might be one reason why we need a native Realm API and also uh, a motivation for the web platform to work uh, with TC39 on having a, an API that works for them. Yeah, I, I think the incentives, they actually do exist here. Um, nobody likes the, uh, the weird stateful globals like window and location. And I, and I don't think that there is a strong push to include them in values returned from a Realm constructor, even on the web platform. Are there any, so it, it sounds like having adopted the no shared state and no IO that, um, uh, that the remaining issue uh, with regard to OCAP safety is the no hidden mutable state. Um, uh, it sounds like that's just an over, I mean, from what I'm gathering from this conversation is that's an oversight rather than some web platform people having some particular objects that satisfy the no shared state, no IO, but have hidden mutable state that they're trying to advocate. Well, so actually those, those, those cases are interesting. So like no IO uh, calls to my mind things like alert and confirm, um, which I'm not sure what their opinions would be, but I suspect omitting them from realms is reasonable. Uh, and then when we talk about um, hidden state, what are your thoughts on set timeout? Because that's the one where I think it's there's there there might be an argument for them to include it in the web platform. So set timeout's worse than hidden state. Set timeout is I/O. Set timeout is is responsive to the to the current time. Um, uh, and, okay, I'll and, take that argument. And as you know from uh, having uh, attacked. <laughs> successfully surmounted the SES challenge, uh, uh, it lets you measure duration, which lets you read covert channels. Yes. Um, so, I th so I think that, so let me say, there's two, cons there's, there's two consistent points of view that, that, that I think we can take to this. One is that as long as everything's deletable, they can put any crap there they want because we can delete it. Sure. Um, uh, and that, as, as Chris says, that's perfectly consistent with everything that CES needs, because CES can start off in a pl platform realm. Yeah, and also as things exist now, right? Like that's... Yeah. You... So, so CES does not need the restriction of no IO, no shared mutable state. Um, uh, but that means that if you're going to use a realm as a coarse-grained confinement boundary for security purposes, uh, you do have to have that initialization code to remove all the powerful things. Uh, and it means that you do have this maintenance issue of how do you know what's powerful or not if the global was added after you wrote the, the code to remove it. I think that the answer for that is very similar to the story with CES. Lockdown has an internal whitelist. The initialization code would have an internal whitelist. And I think that the hard requirement that we would need to bring to the realm's proposal in order to establish that compromise would be that anything that the web platform adds, as Leo mentioned, must be configurable so that the initialization code can delete it and mm -hmm. discoverable so that the so, so that the initialization code can find it. And uh, I think that that might be just the missing bit. We need we need a, a, a phrase that any any extensions to this must be discoverable by walk, by transitive access from global this in the realm. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe also syntax. Uh, syntax. Yeah. Yes. Again, like I don't think the, the incentives exist for the web platform to have things discoverable only via syntax. So it yeah, shouldn't be objectionable to yeah, and and the and the web platform doesn't have a mechanism for introducing new JavaScript syntax, so that's not a concern. Right. Yeah. So, Mark, does this satisfy your concerns? I mean, I I feel like we discussed this kind of thing in a previous meeting, and then uh, I guess you developed more concerns after that, and wonder 
we can draw a conclusion. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out The, this issue of hidden mutable state, if we're going to go as far as no IO and no shared state, and if none of the things that any of the parties have in mind would bring in hidden mutable state, uh, it sounds to me like it's, an, it's more of an oversight rather than an issue of potential fight. You know, the, the web platform people just have not reviewed Leo's patch yet. So we have to come up with a wording that we're comfortable with and that we think can be persuasive to them. Okay. Uh, and, you know, and the, like I said, the other point of view is that we just don't have any restrictions other than deletability. Uh, and, and that's a consistent point of view. It's one that I feel uncomfortable with, but it is a consistent point of view. That would definitely be the easiest to to agree on them with. Mm -hmm. uh, for that one, I would you know feel much more strongly that we eventually need a uh, a whitelist from the platform that stays up to date with the platform. Uh, but I also think I agree with you that that the whitelist doesn't have to be bundled in with this proposal. It could follow this proposal. And be its own separate fight. I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't see that those fights have to be coupled, because right now we've got user maintain. You know, we've got whitelists in user code right now in Cess, in the Cess shim, and we we have the maintenance burden of updating those as the platform changes. Yeah, and in fact, such lists already exist. It's just not they don't they don't exist to running code, unless you write it yourself. Right. Yeah. If instead of a list of globals, what about like a list of any, yeah, objects that are part of, even the one that is transitive, like the prototypes and and uh, and things like that that can be discovered from the global and that are pure ECMAScript. So, so it doesn't feel like it's just a list of names. It's more of a list of objects that are uh, that are part of the language and defined in, in uh, TC39. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good point because there are some things that are not discoverable from the global purely by property walk. Uh, in fact, there are some things that are discoverable only by syntax, like um, you know the uh, async generator prototype is one that we actually had a security hole uh, after async generators were added by the language uh, and our internal mechanisms had not yet been updated, uh, you could access um, shared mutable state, I mean, you know, uh, hidden mutable state by, um, you know, by finding those by syntax, which we had not frozen when we froze CES. Uh, so having a whitelist of all that at least includes all of the intrinsics that are not reachable that are not discoverable by property walk would actually be a wonderful thing. Uh, once again, I, I would agree that that that's something that doesn't have to be, that does not need to be bundled in with the realm proposal. Indeed, and we could probably actually address that with perhaps a language invariant that everything that is that is producible by syntax should be discoverable from global this, which would have prevented that problem from occurring in a very natural way. We wouldn't have had to have a, we, would, we don't need a whitelist if there is, uh, if, if there is a global for, uh, for the async generator. Right. Yeah, um, the, yeah. I don't know I think, if we want it to be reachable by property walk from the global this, but you're right, that would solve that problem. I suspect that adding these new global variables would be more amenable to, you know, more politically easy to do than adding this global whitelist. For sure. For um, sure. Uh, sorry if I'm, uh, I am, might be interrupting here, but I think we have like uh, 12 minutes left and uh, I still have an update on the modules graph. Um, just want to give more space to that discussion and uh, that might be a little bit more actionable. Excellent. 
for this meeting, if you don't mind, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd love to hear this too, because last time I checked, there was uh, that 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 Chrome in particular is digging its heels into uh, one module graph per window, basically. Yeah, um, I I think there there is. Um, so uh, I've been discussing with uh, Shu. I believe Daniel also like discussed with Shu. I was on PTO last week, but then I reached out to Shu, and uh, we seem like there is a there is an opportunity here for uh, to get an agreement with the Chrome team. So when we talk about module graph and reusing the module graph, there is an implementation detail of what they have for module graph. So from my, my understanding with Shu. This should this might be more simple than we are also expecting for this fight. And uh, Shu uh, told me they would be satisfied if just reusing this mo uh, the same module graph for I/O, but actually just fetching and having some I/O cached. I, I love uh, the baby. Congratulations! It's so beautiful. Um, they're so beautiful and. Um, congratulations. Um, <laughs> and uh, so for so for the module graph that you want to be, uh, they are only going to need to cache the IO part. But still, evaluation would be separate from each different global disk. This is actually what I want. Um, that actually matches what we, we need and even provides like some better caching. So if we just have caching for IO, if like uh, the file can be found, that's fine. What we need is just like to have a separate evaluation for each different realm. Mark, you're muted. What about separate linking? Yeah, of course it would have separate linking. It wouldn't, there's no way it could work otherwise. You know, it would be a separate, separate source text module record, but maybe fits the same. Actually, oh, someone's typing. Maybe it's Richard. Uh, so I don't, I don't know exactly what the proposed resolution is. Uh, honestly, I don't understand the concerns that Dominic is raising. It seems like Shu agrees that we should have a separate evaluation of the module per realm. Otherwise, nothing makes any sense. And uh it might be some it may be potentially an editorial change you know in the case of import assertions dominic specifically insisted that we don't cache io so uh i'll be a little bit surprised if the solution is to cache io in this case um, but it may be an editorial change as simple as right now there's a module map per realm and instead we would say well there's one module map per window and that like contains a different copy of the module keyed on the realm, like keyed weekly on the realm. So, so we actually already do that effectively in Node on our VM modules. Um, so it's certainly possible today. There are existing bugs. We haven't been able to upstream changes to allow it to not leak memory. Uh, and so I'm wondering if this is kind of like how import assertions was based upon the HTML specs specific implementation of caching, if it's the same there that's going on here? Uh, well, this, you know, the, the realm case requires more things to be weakly held than the import assertion case. Because in the import assertion case, you know, there's just so many different things you could write in the assertions. But in the realm case, uh, you know, you can create unlimited realms and they have liveness, lifetimes, things like that. So in V8 in particular, it doesn't matter if you weakly hold them, the code gen actually holds them strongly. So you always leak memory. Um, we yeah. Have a, we got a won't fix back from them a few years ago on that. Oh, wow. If you could direct me to that issue, then I'd like to understand it better. Gus Kaplan is probably the most vocal there, probably easier to talk to him. So I think um, V8 would have to decide that they're okay with collecting 
modules that are were loaded into realms that are garbage collected. If they were to ship the realm API in any form. Uh, it depends. For a lot of stuff, a lot of hot module reloading in Node do leak memory already. So it's it's just kind of a reality people have lived with. And that's uh, even without ES well, modules. That's straight common JS, usually leaks. Well, that's fine. But I think once it's in the web, then the priority for fixing the memory leaks will be higher for them. Well, the won't fix we got back, if I recall, was that um, they don't. So when we're talking about module maps, there's the local and the global. Uh, the locals, they were fine collecting. The global, they wanted to be persistent in case it ever gets reloaded, ever. And there's no real way to state that this thing, which on the web is always able to forge the identity because it's stored by a string, um, will never be loaded again. Sorry, I'm not sure what you mean by local. Uh, does local correspond to realms in the Realm API? No, inside of the ECMAScript spec, there's actually another module map per source text module record that guarantees a deterministic result once you import something and it succeeds. That's the local module map. They're fine garbage collecting local references, but the global map is always keyed by string. And so that means it's forgeable and they don't want to deal with that. They didn't want to make it so that it's not keyed by string. So when we generate virtual modules in our VM module in Node, we actually assign them a string always. And you have to like guard against forgery of the string, which is actually rather hard. Uh, this memory leak sounds quite different from what I'm talking about for realms, because you know the, the module map needs to be keyed not just by the module specifier, which I guess will remain a string until we have module blocks, in which case it will have to be possible to make these weekly hells. Um, it's also keyed by the realm, or equivalently, there's a module map per realm. And so when the realm dies, that should sort of kill all the strings, regardless of how forgeable the strings are. That is certainly one of the principal. That is the why, ideal. One of the principal reasons that the module blocks proposal is exciting is because it ex it, it shifts the Overton window <laughs> for, for for what browsers are able to contemplate as a as a possibility and maybe make it easier for so, post compartment. Unfortunately, you don't actually have to hold those referentially. We do so with basically a primitive array that we had to request V8 to add, and so we do it by integer. Uh, I don't see what this has to do with the realm module memory leak that we're talking that about. Module blocks don't actually make it so you need to hold on to anything weekly. So like they're not going to shift the capabilities to have a new capability. Yeah, what you're saying, I believe, is that even module blocks can just be assigned an incremental, an auto-incremented auto index and, and still be held strongly that way. Correct. That's what we have to do right now. And that's that's the solution that they proposed we do like four years ago. And so they added this thing called a primitive array to V8, which ensures that we can only store primitives to associate with the module map. I'm very curious community. what their motivation was for this requirement. Because I I am unclear. Yeah. Uh, we're getting close to time, uh, and it looks like we've uh, we've absorbed it all with one topic, which is fine. Uh, but that means I think that uh, we should honor Daniel's request to discuss uh, transitive immutability by putting it high on the agenda next week. Um, and uh, I think that I'm going to I'm going to stop the recording now, unless there's anything we wish to continue to discuss on the record. All right. Thanks.